here with the Veronica Harris Show and my co-host, Big Little Brother, aka Gregory. Gregory, we back. Yeah, we back again. And this time, you know, I I I kind of let y'all off the hook. I know y'all was real burdensome, always trying to find guests. So I, I got us a great guest today. And um, if you're a coach, if you're a teacher, if you're in the uh, basketball, you need to like, subscribe, hit the link. Because, <laughs> like, we got basketball, we got physical education, we got education teaching. We got that covered on today's episode. Well, Gregory, it's not wiggling. You're shaking the thing. It's been hey, man, listen, I'm, I'm going to move a little bit. So, I mean... <laughs> so tell us about our guest, Gregory. Oh, it's uh, the DCSAA Coach of the Year, head coach of Sidwell Friends, is joining us today, Mr. Eric Singletary. Woo! Clap it up, clap it up, clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. Eric, we appreciate you joining us today, giving us a little bit of your time, man. I know it's been a whirlwind for you after all the success you had. Uh, right after you won, I know you went down to the Final Four and, and checked that out, man. What's been going on with you, E? Oh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank y'all for having me um, to be on this platform. Like I said, with an old friend and teammate uh, and your family, and I uh, look forward to getting into a great discussion about you know our sport and physical education or whatever else is on the docket. But uh, man, it's just been a heck of a year, like you said. You know, we won the state championship again. We won our conference. Um, you know, went down to the Final Four down in Tampa Bay uh, for the national championship with that. Obviously, I went to the Final Four in New Orleans as well. So I feel like I've been on a world tour for sure. Okay, now, so let's talk about, hold on. Let's talk about a little bit what we did now. Because everybody thinks, you know, geography is not everybody's forte. So the District of Columbia, as we know, we know it's not a state. <laughs> um, so you said you won your conference champion. What is the conference that Sidwell Friends plays in? Uh, we play in the Mid-Atlantic Conference called the MAC uh, with schools like Flint Hill, uh, Potomac School, Murray, St. James, St. Andrews, uh, and Georgetown Day. Um, so we won that conference this year. So like a lot of private prep schools or just private yeah, schools? Independent schools, yeah. Okay, independent. Okay, so you won that championship. Then you said the state championship. Now, Sidwell is in D.C., so what does the state com compromise of uh, state championship? Yeah, they about... Uh, I want to say five years ago, maybe, maybe longer, but Clark Ray, who's since passed, came up with the amazing idea uh, for a kid like me who played at Sidwell and didn't have a chance to compete for the city title back in the day when uh, the things that Greg got a chance to do, being at DeMath mm -hmm. and playing against the public school teams, uh, they basically made D.C. a state for sports. Um, and so now each sport um, has a state championship. And so, you know, playing against schools like Gonzaga, St. John's and all the public and charter schools, uh, Carol, um, so we get a chance to compete for uh, what we call a state championship now. We've now won that twice uh, in the last four years, so I'm super excited that we've been able to get a chance to do it uh, and be good enough to win it. Now, when we say state championship, now, these schools that we most, that Gregory, we're very familiar with, um, you know, some of them are in Maryland, so we are we talking about private schools or Catholic schools that are only schools that are in D.C.? Only DC, only DC. Okay. Uh, public, right. public charter and private schools uh, compete. For okay. The state so the math could not be in it because the math is in Hyattsville, Maryland. Right, right. Okay, absolutely. Now you said you took that and you went to the final four down in Tampa. What was that comprised of? Uh, this was the first year, the inaugural uh, state champions uh, invitational that they wanted to have as a spinoff of Geico. Uh, which they kind of went to more of these uh, factory schools now, like Sierra Canyon and different schools like that. So they wanted to create something, quote unquote, for the regular high school to have a national championship. And so we were able to go down to Tampa uh, and had a great experience uh, through, um, like I said, Geico um, and Axe and uh, the people at the state inaugural championship uh, just couldn't have had a better experience. We lost in the final four to the eventual champion, uh, Calvary Christian out of uh, Fort Lauderdale. But, you know, now it gives us, each something else to shoot for, you know, outside of the state, you know, if you win your state championship, now you may get the invitation to go play for a national championship. So that was incredible to be a part of the first one. Okay, awesome. That's awesome. Okay, good. So we got that all cleared up. Okay, Gregory, continue. Hey, man, uh, Eric, Eric's one of, to the audience, Eric's one of the very lucky few that gets to coach at his alma mater. He graduated from Sidwell Friends. He coaches at his alma mater. But my mm -hmm. first question, because that's awesome. Maybe we'll talk about that later. 
my mm -hmm. first question, Eric, you've been coaching since 2008. And this year, you won Coach of the Year. Is this your first Coach of the Year award? First all, first all Met Coach of the Year. I've won the DC the, uh, SAA uh, Coach of the Year before, as well as you know other publications. But first all Met, Washington Post all Met Coach of the Year. So do you feel like this year you did your best coaching job between 08 and now? Was there a change of philosophy or change the way you do things? Or they just finally recognize your greatness. You've been doing it. You, you've been doing it since 08 all the way the same way. Yeah, I mean, you know how subjective it is, Greg, especially in an area like this with so many great teams, great coaches. So, I mean, you, you get caught in the whirlwind of like guys who are always deserving. So clearly like the result, us going 29 and one this year, uh, being number two ranked team in the area, you know, winning the various championships that we did always push you in the conversation to get this kind of award. But I certainly, as you know, as a coach, I've probably done a better coaching job uh, with a team that might have went 500. So, you know, who knows? You know, mm -hmm. I, I, feel, I feel honored uh, to receive the award on behalf of, you know, all the coaches that do a great job of trying to impact kids. Okay. Oh, I have now a question. I have a question real quick. So now that we, you know, this is 2022, you know, we've recently come out of a pandemic. Um, I know up in Jersey how we dealt with it, but down there, have you noticed anything? Like, was it more difficult coaching this year? Because I don't know, when did y'all go back to school? Like, when were you able to be fully full-time with your athletes and train and coaches, you know, that sort of thing? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, we were fortunate enough to be back somewhat full-time even last year, Veronica, like, you know, just with the extensive capabilities, I guess, of an independent school sometimes uh, to be tested. Uh, we were getting tested every week. So we were back in person for a while. So we had a chance to adjust uh, to being back in school and having in-person workouts, uh, even although limited uh, for our size of the groups, you know, I've been able to be in contact with my players um, all the way through, you know, like I said, as early as last year. So this year we were just fortunate to be able to like have I mean, think about this, making it through a season with no injuries and no COVID, you know, on my wow. team. So, I mean, it was just probably one of those chronicle, you know, meant to be kind of seasons. Uh, so couldn't be more uh, blessed to, to actually get through a season and happy that we all was able to get back to some normalcy. Now, Sidwell Friends is a small school, um, you know, Quaker school. Probably most people know Sidwell Friends because that was where the Obama, Malia, and uh, Sasha, they went there. So that's how, and Chelsea Clinton. So they probably know that more as places where president's children will go. Right. Um, however, but it seems to be a hotbed of uh, basketball. <laughs> so how is it, how do you find, because you're able to recruit, are you not? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So how do you, <laughs> so how are you, how do you find your athletes? Where do, where do you find them? You know, it's been a crazy, like, because I think in my 15 years, like, it's been the same formula where, you know, of course, we'll go out and, you know, see a couple of kids. But for the most part, Veronica, we've been fortunate to have people in the community that just usually by word of mouth, you know, tells me that they got a family or a kid that they think fits what I'm looking for. And uh, we tend to go that way. I think, at a, like you said, small, independent school, co-ed, uh, you know, incredible admission standards, you know, super expensive. So recruiting is not the easiest thing for me. So you know, I tend to try to, you know, you want to hit a home run with the one or two kids that you're looking at. So um, word of mouth has been excellent to us. You know, we've had the players like Jelani Williams, Josh Hart, uh, Sadiq Bay, uh, amongst Jason Gibson, amongst, you know, many others who have really much come to me through somebody else telling me about them. So I don't spend a whole lot of time in like a bunch of back gyms falling in love with 80 kids that can't get in. So, you know, I've been blessed to have not have to recruit, over recruit. Yeah, and that's all I was about to say, you know, so it's not easy to get in there. And although we do know that, you know, when it comes to athletics, sometimes there are special admits for certain students, but they still have to be able to do the work. And let's be honest, it say, well, friends, is very expensive. And a lot of athletes that are very good come from households that do not have the type of finances to go to Sidwell. So is there a scholarship money offer? Like, how do you get them in? Yeah, I mean, I think you're chronicling like how difficult it is not to try to make what I'm doing even more um, substantial. But like, yeah, we it's strictly financial aid. I think I've done a pretty good job over the years working with the admissions people to get them to see that they can't treat it like uh, child support <laughs> and just look at, you know, side to side. Because I think what happens is the middle class gets punished uh, a lot of places in America where it looks like they can afford it, but they really can't. 
Uh, right. And like you said, the issue becomes the full pay kid for whatever reason usually isn't a great athlete. Uh, and then the kid like me who comes from a you know disenfranchised neighborhood usually doesn't have the skills or the resources to do the work. Uh, you know, whereas I, I got all, you know, pretty much all the money when I came here, but it's, it's hard to find that kind of kid. So usually your best candidates are going to be middle class kids. And unfortunately, sometimes they get priced out of uh, the opportunity. And that's what's funny, because I think Gregory and I, we kind of went through that. We were middle class, but Lord knows, you know, not to give out mommies a day's business, but we could not <laughs> afford, you know, you know, we there was help that was needed. And, yeah. you know, especially when it came time for me to go to college, thank God I had a full scholarship to Seton Hall because my parents couldn't have afforded that. But, you know, how they look at you and be like, well, no, you make too much money. I'm like, who says? Like right, who says right. it's like you really it's like almost that like they want you to come from like the worst of the worst situations before they will say okay we'll give you something yeah no it's just 100 percent true like you know and that's i speak to them uh on different committees about that you know especially if we pride ourselves on diversity here uh which is crazy that you know being like greg said coaching at my alma mater and when i was here you know being always pretty strong and diverse but certainly not what it is today you know we're actually 51% uh, non-white. And so it's crazy wow. that to think that that's even, you know, a reality today. Oh, that's, man. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Leave it to them Quakers, I tell you. Go ahead, Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Gregory. Hey, hey, Eric, something just dawned on me. <clears throat> and and you, can, you can be honest, man. Just, just give it to me straight. All right. You were 29 and 1, right? Uh-huh. Won the, won the DCSAA. The girls program was undefeated, I thought, or was yeah. won the DCS, DCS double Won everything, won everything. No now, more in the country. Are you stealing her plays or she's stealing your plays? Which one is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just, I'm so fortunate to have such a great relationship with Tamika, uh, root for those girls. And tr trust me, Greg, they were so good that I told Tamika to make her schedule first and so I can make my schedule around her so we can get to watch them play. So it's just oh, been a thrill to have, you know, like I said, because honestly, when I watch these games, I tell the kids all the time, I get to win twice. Uh, I get to win as an alum first, you know, and a coach second. So uh, yeah. just feeling that pride, you know, in a program that wasn't meant to be good uh, just by the standards that Veronica detailed, you know, it's just exciting to see young people who are getting it done in the classroom, but also showing that we can get it done on the court. E, now, <clears throat> I was with a group of guys just the other day and then we were talking about, you know, what's different from our generation when we play in the time it is now, how you have to coach differently. One guy was like, man, you got to adjust. Another kid was saying, another friend of ours saying, man, don't adjust, make them adjust to you. How do you deal with today's athlete? And Cause today's athlete grew up in a time that we didn't grow up in. So what are your thoughts on how to, to coach and teach and educate today's youth? Uh, great question. Um, I certainly didn't do it well when I first got the job. Uh, and I've evolved. <laughs> I, I believe if you don't adapt, you're going to die. You know what you I mean? Like so, honesty. Honesty is good. Yeah. If you don't adapt, you're going to die. You know, you thought like, you know, of course I coached to a standard. Uh, but at the end of the day, like you really have to adjust to um, the climate that we're in. That's the only way to be successful. Like I could keep trying to make it about me, but I've, I've learned that it's about the kids and like meeting them where they are. Um, they have much more influence with social media. Uh, the parents are more involved than they've ever been. Uh, so there's a lot of other caveats that we can't even can compare with that made us a, maybe a little easier to coach. But I still think kids are kids. And I think at the end of the day, the adults are usually the ones that like ruin the experience. So I've done a really good job of uh, coaching the parents. Uh, and I think the fact that coaching the parents to me allows it to be much easier uh, to coach the kids. Like I'll give you an example. Um, if you look at games, a lot of parents sit around the gym and they're different silos, I call it. And when you do that, you're able to look at the game through your kids lens. And therefore, it's always going to be tricky when you let them do that. So one of the things that I've demanded is that the parents sit behind us because I feel like you're forced to cheer for us when you're sitting behind the team. Um, and so I just little ways like that, I think you adapt and you adjust to the kids and you can, you know, maintain your standards and your philosophies. But at the end of the day, you, you certainly have to meet them where they are and the challenges that they're presented with. Because at the end of the day, what, what hasn't changed is that high school period is a very insecure time as it was for all three of us on here. And so I lead with that 
uh, knowing that, that it's a very insecure time. And so I'm much more amenable uh, to those relationships and trying to get them to, you know, see things in a, in a way that, you know, their frontal lobe isn't even developed. So it, they're just harder to coach and, and raise, period. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's right. I can tell you what to say, well, because your vocabulary is exemplary. <laughs> I'm just like, yes, that single friend. <laughs> we can tell it here. Hey, hey, go hey Ron, go ahead, I, got, yes. I, got, I got one more question, and I know you got some ideas you might want, you might want to jump in now. So let me get this one more question off. Sure, here. absolutely. Uh, so Eric, um, and you may not want to, you know, give this up right, right away and that's fine, but what, you know, with so much success at the high school level, um, mm -hmm. what, what, what's on your radar now? Are, are you, what are you looking to do? What, what do you see yourself doing, you know, in the next five years? Man, I ask myself that all the time. Um, I certainly don't want to stay here because I'm afraid to leave but I also don't want to leave because I'm chasing something that I already have. Um, so my son's a junior here, you know, he'll graduate from here next year. So I'm excited about that. So I, I know I'll be here another year at least, um, <laughs> but I'm open. I'm open to all the possibilities. Obviously I know I probably could have been on the college level if I wanted to be, but like you said, the unique aspect is that I get to coach my alma mater. So there's some nostalgia there already that uh, allows me to be happy in my job and, my job security, uh, my impact on kids, you know, basically raising this program out of the ashes and, uh, you know, being a top flight program locally and nationally now. So I kind of have everything I need to some degree, but always certainly never looking to stay stagnant. So it's, it's definitely a constant dilemma, you know, when I ask myself, you know, what's next for me? Awesome, that's great. But if you leave, put the plug in for Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. We need some good leadership in here. Put the Can't plug in for away. Gregory. No, but you know what? I um I appreciate that answer because it seems like that's just the most honest answer a coach has ever given. And I don't care what level we're talking about, because usually when they say, oh, well, you know, you had a success and, uh, you know, let's just say so-and-so's job is open. Are you open to, or, you know, are you thinking about moving to the next level? And they always say, no, I'm going to stay right here. And I want to be, and then two days later, they be off someplace <laughs> else. <laughs> I'm like, you, scallywag. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, Ron, I, I, always tell the parents, I always tell the parents that uh, if I left, it would be something that everybody understood. So it wouldn't be capricious or arbitrary for me just to be chasing, you know, that college level is very, uh, it's a whole different animal. So, you know, it's not even about coaching. It's like, do I want that lifestyle more than anything? Yeah, like, are you about that life, really? Because, you know, a lot of times when people get into different situations where they don't succeed, it's not because they're not necessarily competent or good at it. It's because they're not about that life. Right. Because usually right. a lot of different careers um, require a change in lifestyle. A change mm -hmm. in how you do things. It's not mm -hmm. that you can't, you don't have the skills or the wherewithal or the knowledge to get the job done, but it's like, nah, I'm not about that life. I'm not about getting up at such and such and, you know, five right. o'clock every morning, sleeping right. in, the, you know, staying in the office till three in the Fast. morning, breaking down. You know, I'm not about that. Facts, facts. So, okay, that's the best. You know what? We're going to have to make a clip of that. And like, you're going to have to share that with people. <laughs> like, this is how you answer that question. <laughs> This is how you answer that question, but that's really good. You graduated, so you went to Civil Friends, you graduated from Civil Friends, and you went on to Rice. Shout out to Rice. I was recruited by them, okay? What did you study at Rice University? Uh, political Science, International Relations. Uh, had an amazing time in Houston, so shout out to Rice. Okay, but you became, you studied those things, but you became a physical education teacher, yes? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, our best dreams and thoughts, you know, you know, God laughs at us when we do that. So um, I came back when I finished playing. I worked at a law firm and was headed that route. But I wanted to get in. I wanted to do a legal assistant job first just to make sure I really, really wanted to do that. And, uh, and it wasn't terrible. But I think once I got back into coaching, um, that was just it was it. And I realized that I was kind of probably fighting against that because I wanted to do something that was commiserate to my classmates, you know, prove that I went to Sidwell, prove that I went to Rice and be able to say that I was a thing as far as a title, you know, we come back to reunions and stuff like that. But once I let that go, uh, I haven't worked in 15 years. So it's been amazing. Okay. It's amazing that you said, I noticed that you said you haven't worked even though. Yeah. So when you love what you do, it's not about work. Gregory, you sort of took that route, you know, business and finance. And now all of a sudden you became a PE teacher and then you was like, eh. 
around, become a certified personal trainer. So I think you found, Gregory, eventually what you really wanted to do that makes you happy. Is yep. that not correct, Gregory? All yep, right. Yep. And it's about like, I, I, so I'm so sure the same with Eric, you know, the impact we have. At first, we just, we just doing it just because, you know, we're, we still love the game. We're around the game. And then once you see that impact you're able to have on young individuals, then it's kind of hard to just, you know, go away from that for some money. What, Eric, what is the major, one of your major themes you, you try to instill uh, when you're working with kids? Like, what do you feel like is most important or what do you find yourself um, delivering the most? Oh man, um, we obviously tell them so many things, but I, I honestly think having unwavering confidence, I try to get them to the fullness of accepting failure and that, um, you know, sport, the beauty of sports is that you can get an F and still be successful. You know, it's the only place you can get an F and actually be at the top of your field. You know, if you hit three out of 10 baseballs, you're an all-star. Yeah, uh, that's the, de ooh, that game is the definition of failure. Child. Go ahead. I'm you sorry. Know, Steph Curry, you know, greatest shooter in the world, shoots 40 something percent. You know, these are F's. You know, a quarterback completes six out of 10 passes. They say he's great. So, you know, that's the beauty of sports. So I try to get them to not be so consumed with uh, the numbers and the performance. And like I said, if I had one quality that I wanted every player that I've ever coached to have in common, it would be thick skin because I just think that's a quality for life. Man, I, that, that's a new one for me. I'm going to steal that one. I'm, I'm going to borrow that one. I'm back <laughs> Facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is hey, that is a great one that is that is good like you know we we do teach kids we want them to be successful i mean that's without a doubt we all want them to be successful but still still in all we do have to tell them that where you learn your most is when you fail Yes. Because think about it when we succeed it's like yeah we succeed it's all good it's all gravy i'm great we're great we don't need to think about anything else because we're great. But it's yep. when we fail that we have to say, hmm, okay, now we're not so great. Now, why was that? Mm -hmm. And then, you, you know, you have to go back to the drawing board, as they say, or go back to the lab, or, you know, figure it out and stuff like that. And it's, it's so it's okay to accept failure as long as you're accepting it as a tool for learning. And, yep. you know, I had, I spoke with someone recently and they were saying, we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't categorize it as failure. We were saying the opportunity. Mm, like you know, that. this is an opportunity. Okay, you didn't fail. This is not, you, this, you've stumbled into or you've walked into an opportunity. And what's mm -hmm. the opportunity? The opportunity to be better. The opportunity like to that. get better. The, the opportunity like to do more. So again, it's all in the vocabulary that we use yeah. and how we, you know, get our minds thinking. But definitely, Definitely, I, I I like what you said there. Definitely, Gregory, you. Um. No, you know you're not with us, Gregory. I I, was, I, I got a. <laughs> yes, that's the thing about Gregory. It's like I try. I give him one job, one job, and he just loses the whole. He's just off on his head. He's not with me. He's focused out here, wherever there that's is. What, that's, what, like, that's what happens. That's what happens when you're not in studio. <laughs> he does it in studio. <laughs> oh, I, I can't help you then, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, so, the rocket. I, I ain't want to get into you know my next theme, my next topic, because I know you're gonna cut me off. So like, how much time? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't you? No, 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 no. You no, know, no gaslighting here. Don't you put this on me, little one? Okay. <laughs> Matter of fact, <clears throat> Ronga, you you I, I gotta commend you, Ronga. You were on time today. Like you you was like ready to go before everybody today. Like cool. I got to give you a round of applause. <laughs> it's always late. Always late. But what? we got time. We got time to keep going though. Like you no, know, what do you call on this girl? What do you mean always late? I am not always late. I have been on time. See, I found whenever I was late, I found it as an opportunity to get better, and I have been better. <laughs> so you talking about always late? You have got it. no, I no, like it. I like it. <laughs> no. But you know what? We are coming close to the end. But Eric, we want you to come back or stay around. Come back for another show because in the other show, we want to talk about 
we want to talk about, you know, some of these themes that you have because I I resonate with them and I think they're awesome. And like I said, like Gregory said, I'm gonna steal some of this stuff <laughs> to use yeah. with, you know, my athletes and my students. And um, you know, that whole failure thing, that whole, you know, sport is the only place where you can get an F and it's okay. Mm -hmm. Genius, Gregory. Thank you. Gregory, are you with us? Yeah, like you, you, you trying to go out, but uh, my producer over here said we got four more minutes. So she said that four minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but Gregory, but no, I do want to give you the opportunity before we uh, take you know take us out. Do you have anything that you want to say? Um. Yeah, just uh, thank you, Eric again, <laughs> man. <laughs> Eric for joining us. This is what you don't know about Eric, and which I had to find out. Like, you got to track him down. He's so busy. He's so popular. Like, you ain't going to call him and get him. Okay. You're not going to call him. You're not going to get him on the second try. You're not going to get him on the third try. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that we actually got him on the show, I, I got to, again, say thanks, Eric. <laughs> I know it's a whirlwind. I know you've been busy. Appreciate it. You know what? He's actually, he's actually correct because he did say that. And I was like, oh, Gregory, what did you speak to him? And he was like, nah, but I'm going to get him. <laughs> he, was just like, I'm gonna get him. <laughs> he was like, I'm going to get him. And then, you know, but he responded quickly when I reached out to him. So I, I was you know, excited I, to do it. I was excited. Like, you know, and I just ran, uh, you and I just spent some time together, Greg. So it was good seeing you. And Obviously, I always see you when I'm at Mike's house, or at least try to. I know you're, you know, neighbors, and uh, but I'm excited to be here. Like I, I love people like you guys doing this platform, uh, you know, just bringing awareness to our game and you know to young people and talking about different topics. And uh, it's always a good opportunity to you know practice my my media chops. So it's, it's, I appreciate <laughs> the opportunity. Well, we give you a 10 out of 10 on your media chops because the way you answer questions, top notch, the vocabulary top notch it's just i would say yeah definitely 10 out of 10 top notch all the way around yeah. sit well for you you're doing sit well friends proud you definitely are all right well we're about to go now thank you but you're going to come back with us and do another show i already got my thoughts in mind for that because you said some things here that got my mind spinning and whirling so i can't wait to talk to you about that but like we used to say all the time you know but well, we do say thank you for uh, tuning in and watching the Veronica Harris show. Please make sure you like and subscribe on YouTube. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we always like to say what, Gregory? Deuces. Deuces. See you next time.